Hello, and welcome to the Fighting Moose Podcast. I'm your host and narrator, Jason Hendrickson. This is a podcast where I retell stories, some fictional and some historical, that can be enjoyed by people of all ages. Well, the boss has spoken. Today, we start the next Nibble book as we read the story, Why Nibble Bunny Was Puzzled which comes to us from the book Nibble Rabbit Makes More Friends. And like the other Nibble stories, it is written by John Breck. As of today, we are now on the downslide of the month of March, and tomorrow is St. Paddy's Day. We celebrated St. Paddy's Day a little early, I guess. Last night for dinner, I made some corned beef and cabbage, and man was it good. It may have been the best corned beef I've ever made, as it was very tender. I guess that's what happens when you cook it in the crock pot for about nine hours or so. As I was making that scrumptious dinner, John finished a book. He logged 40 minutes of reading time yesterday. He and his classmates are trying to get 100 minutes per week of reading. I forget what the number is, but I think the whole school is trying to read 150,000 minutes per in the month of March, or something close to that. I hope that you have been logging some reading minutes as well, and if reading is a new thing for you, I hope that it will continue even after March is over. Happy reading to you. Now, let's turn to today's story. I hope you enjoy. Let's begin. Nibble Bunny was puzzled. You remember all the funny things Nibble heard about man from the guests who came to his storm party. That was the time the big hollow oak blew down and the brave little bunny who lived at Dr. Muskrat's pond rescued all the poor homeless folk who had been shaken out of it. He showed them the way to a fine little tent all made of corn stalks out in the broad field. It was so nice and snug and comfortable, the minute they tucked their tails inside it and caught their breaths and sleeked down their fur and their feathers, they forgot all about how the terrible storm was having a tantrum outside. They had plenty of room to dance and plenty of corn for refreshments, Why, the party was as big a success as if they'd held it in a hired hall with engraved invitations. But the most fun they had was talking about folks like you and me. And if you'd laid an ear to a crack before the wind tucked the snow blanket all around them, you wouldn't have been very much flattered by what they said either. You might have overheard the bats insisting that man looked like a frog. You might say that about some folks, of course, but certainly not about you or me. You'd probably have heard the partridge say that man was brown and wrinkly, like Grandpop Snapping Turtle. The man they saw certainly must have worn some funny clothes. Chatter Squirrel said man was pink and tan. His pink was sunburn, the kind the fellows get down at the swimming hole. Everyone just knew that everyone else was wrong. Then Gimlet Woodpecker insisted man came as many shapes and sizes and colors as the flowers. And then they didn't know what to think. They were just two things they all agreed on. He didn't have a tail, and he was dangerous. Nibble didn't say anything, cause he'd never seen one. But the first time he set eyes on Tommy Peel, he made up his mind they were all wrong, excepting about the tail. The little boy looked to him like a red-winged blackbird. 
That was cuz Tommy had on his new red mittens and his dark blue sweater and his shiny rubber boots. But dangerous, he certainly didn't look it. Still, when Silvertip the fox only caught a glimpse of him, he turned tail and ran. So Nibble made up his mind to copy the mouse motto, Say nothing and stay cautious. At least, that's what he thought he was, too cautious for anything. Wasn't it perfectly safe and proper to dig into that queer lair where the mice were holding a party of their own? Wasn't it nice and dark as his own hole? And nobody could possibly see him. How was a bunny to know it was a soapbox? Or that it was part of a figure four trap? Or that Tommy had set it specially for him? You see, he hadn't been caught. He'd dug into it on purpose, because those nice little mice had invited him. And there, the three of them were busy feasting when they heard the clump, clump, clump of the clumsy hind paws of that little boy. Mice, he said, it's that man. Before he could twiddle a tail, Tommy's red mitten was across the hole, and Tommy's pink bare paw was closing on the lady mouse. Then things began to fly. Nibble was among them. He flew to the next little cornstalk tent, his heart thumping faster than his paws. They were all of them right, he gasped. That man is dangerous. Dangerous has Silvertip himself. Poor Satin Skin. I suppose that's the end of her. He never thought of saying, poor Tommy Peel, but Tommy was the right one to feel sorry for. Satin Skin had closed her little needle teeth on his finger, and before Nibble had taken a long breath, he heard a voice squeaking, Weak! 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 Which is mouse for, I'm lost! Where are you? Here! He thumped with both hind feet. And who should come scuttling in but Satin Skin herself? He could feel her tremble all over as she tried to squirm right under him. My ears! Nibble exclaimed. I thought that man had caught you. No, I caught him, wept the little lady mouse. But he shook me so hard I was scared to let go again. And when I did, he sent me tail over ears. I tell you, it was awful. Weak! Shh! He'll hear you, Nibble warned. There, your head will stop whirling pretty soon. He knew just how she felt, because he'd felt the same way himself the time he tumbled off the back of that red cow he took for a log when Silvertip was chasing him. But Tommy wasn't even thinking about satin skin, let alone listening for her. He stamped his tall rubber boots and sucked his poor nipped finger. Funniest thing, he wondered to himself. I just know there was a rabbit in that trap. I saw him go in there. I don't guess it's very much good. I'll try the pitcher wire. So he pulled on his red mitten and tramped off to the path in the bushes by the fence he'd seen Nibble slip through. This time, he bent down a springy sapling and tied a loop of wire to the tip of it, the soft kind you use to hang pictures, and he pegged the lower edge of the loop across Nibble's pathway. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Fighting Moose Podcast. Please join us next time as we read another exciting story. Today's music was provided by the artist Analog by Nature, and the audio clips were provided from NASA. For more information to download and or listen to audio or materials from all our recordings, or to contact us, 
please visit www.thefightingmoose.com or you can follow the links in the show notes. If you enjoy the podcast, please leave us a review wherever you get your podcast or on iTunes and tell a friend. Thank you for your patronage and as always, try and do a random act of kindness every day. Missing complete Houston. After uh, serving the world for over 30 years, the space shuttle turned its place in history. <laughs>